Welcome to this brand new episode of Cast It to the King. I am your host, Joshua Mickle, and back with me live in person is my father, Jack Mickle. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Yourself? Doing good, doing good, and looking forward to diving into the topics today on hand. Let's dive. And so, as I adjust that there, the first topic we are going to be talking about, and it's much of a broader topic, but to give a quick review of a- of the new film, Alien Romulus, is that... This is Disney's first attempt at the Alien franchise. We've seen them crack, give them a, give it a crack at the Predator franchise with Prey, which released on Hulu. Did really well, appealed to the fans and especially to the critics, and probably one of the most acclaimed Prey. I mean, the, one of the most acclaimed Predator films in the franchise since the original one. We recent we had the lackluster or yeah we had the lackluster esque AVP Alien vs Predator movies. We've had multiple Predator movies and multiple Alien prequels and sequels, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the past. Disney's first cracks at Prey and Alien, to me for this topic, as it shows in the description below, that Disney ever since they have acquired 20th Century Studios used to be dubbed 20th Century Fox, has fired on all cylinders, I would argue, for all of their properties, including, most recent, Alien Romulus. So I will ask you first, what do you make of the standout performances of these latest films from Alien, from Planet of the Apes, from Prey, and even to a certain extent, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, which used to be a 20th century property, now under the Disney banner. How how would you assess how Disney has handled this particular studio and compared to one which we will talk about later on the show? So I think that I haven't seen Alien Romulus, though I am a huge Alien uh, franchise fan, though not everyone, not all the Alien movies that I like. I like the first and second one, Alien Aliens, but Alien Resurrection and all that, I didn't, yeah, I didn't like too much. Uh, but I loved Prey, saw it when it first came out on Hulu. Uh, I thought it was an excellent, excellent film on the, the Predator uh, story franchise. And as far as how Disney is, is handling uh, their hardcore PG 13 and their and their rated R films. I think in this particular instance, uh, on those s- slate of films, they have hit a home run. If not hit a home run, then they've gotten awfully close, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm not a big, you know, in the know of directors and writers and all that kind of they've stuff. They've gotten the right type, but of whoever directors, they are, right? They you got had, the right you had team. The director of Don't Breathe for. We had the director, the director of Don't Breathe for this Alien movie. Mm-hmm. We've had the director of Ten Cloverfield Lane for the Prey movie. Mm-hmm. So they're doing something. Right. No, I, I doing love them. Right? They 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 get they put butts in seats. I think, and uh, well, I mean, the box office proves, uh, and I think that the the audience itself uh, approves of it. So you know, yeah, I I I love the job they're doing uh, with that. Uh, not with everything that Disney's doing, but with that particular aspect. I think they're doing excellent, really. Yeah. In terms of this particular movie, which we will, I will quickly dive into for a quick review, this film will touch upon stuff that will acknowledge the first movie and uh, set up potential things that you will see in the sequels. I'm not the biggest Alien fan or Predator fan, like my first introduction to this franchise was Alien versus Predator, um, so being able to uh, watch this movie and there, I did not know there was a nod to the very first movie, which actually at the end of the first movie is what sets up the events of this movie, uh, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And so this movie, if that's the case, this movie ends on a particular note where it's similar to the first movie to where. Could you do a sequel as a as like a result of what happened at the end of this movie yeah. per se without spoiling anything? And there is a hybrid in this movie which will give you it, uh, uh, it's just it, it's the creep it is one of the creepiest things you can ever show on screen in the sim. It is one of the again I'm trying to do this without spoiling. Well, it then don't spoil because, it. Like. You've seen you've seen Prometheus, right? You know yeah. the, the engineers what they look like. Yeah. Now imagine that in a demonic way. Okay. 
that's what this hybrid looks like in this okay. new alien you're Ramos giving it away though movie. you should be doing it but i'm not telling you what the hybrid is though. <laughs> you need to put a so. spoiler <laughs> warning on this video <laughs> it's not i'm not i'm not giving away Spoiler, there's face huggers. Spoiler, there's aliens and the, there's xenom there's xenomorphs huggers. in this movie. Spoiler alert, there's a hybrid that they introduce in this movie. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't spoil story story details. But uh I think when this cast was originally announced, it's it leaned towards the younger end, like young adult, mm -hmm. to which some would say, Why are you casting kids in an alien movie? But that's the that's one of the best parts of the writers of this movie and the director of this movie, where they set up the story, and uh, I think it's Whalen Utani and Corp like Industries, wherever the corporation is in yeah. this fr in something this like in that. this franchise, where something happens oh. with these young adults, where they're like at different stations or what, like they're stationed somewhere, yeah. they have to go somewhere, and then oh, scratch that, you have to do something else mm -hmm. per changed orders from the comp from the company that's in this franchise so you, you feel for them and there are some characters where you want to, to die first and actually do die first so you're <laughs> so when that happens i'm like yeah i'm like yes <laughs> you're the first one to get uh axe to face hug whatever term you want to use like mm. you're like you're the first one that gets <laughs> by these creatures i'm like yes mm. as much as a a hole you are. I'm like, I'm glad you're the first one. Like, there are those characters for right or wrong for us human beings. It's a movie, but there are there's those characters out there that you watch a movie and you're like, I hope you, I hope you die first. I hope you die first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just that's just me. But overall, the film was really, really riveting. I'm looking forward to what they do if they do a follow up for this movie. The director actually uh, came out and was asked loosely that is there a possibility you want to do an alien versus predator movie uh -huh. to which he did not dodge the question he did not uh tap dance around the question he he openly has said he has thought about it and two if he were to do it he would have to get with the director which he calls his friend from the first uh from the prey movie that that they just did over on hulu with disney uh, that he they will have that he would like to co-direct yeah. an Alien versus Predator movie. So I would venture out this topic to you: Is the audience ready for a modern take? I shouldn't say modern. We had one in two thousand. Yeah. I mean, like a more like a more correct take on Alien versus Predator for this for this generation. I think so. I mean, I, I think uh, I think there's an itch out there that hasn't been scratched, or if it has, not very well. Um, I think that the yeah. I mean, I think people going to eat up the alien and the predator. I don't know what it is about predator, but people seem to eat it up. I mean, a lot of a lot of people do enough enough for it to be successful at the box office. So I would say, yeah, I don't. I I think that it, it it hits a. Uh, a genre that because nowadays you look at horror it's a lot about you know evil satan ghosts uh you know whatever religious it, it, yeah stuff, it has yeah. a very religious connotation to it and i i, I some that, that's for some people but i think this genre of horror where it's more like the monster horror i think is more up most people's alley so to speak so yeah, I, I think you could. Uh, I I'm a big AVP fan. Uh, I know they're cheesy. It's a guilty pleasure for both of us. Yes, yes it is a guilty pleasure for me. Um, but uh, if you want to make it more robust, more, I don't know. Um, I don't say canon like, but something that is is not as cheesy, so to speak. I think yeah, I think a lot of people will go. I think it'd be fantastic. Worst case scenario is you go straight to streaming. I think it would do well there. You know. I think with the recent success of Prey, they are kicking themselves with the last uh, Disney regime with Bob Chapek that they did not get that out in theaters for how yeah. good that film was because I get the reasoning behind why they put Prey in th on Hulu because if you look at the previous Alien movies with Prometheus and Covenant and the particular Predator movies, even for the low budget they were, they weren't received well, and they didn't do well financially. So uh -huh. you had this, you had these IP. You didn't want to completely reboot the thing, but then again, like you don't want to have that sitting on your shelf, like collecting dust. Nah. So nah. 
they say, you know what, let's give this to Hulu treatment. And mm-hmm. it turned out to be their biggest ever streamed thing on Hulu wow. ever no. that they that they release. They don't release the numbers, but that's what they claim. And nothing has touched it, apparently. Like, nothing's ever come out since then saying, this has surpassed Prey. It's like, no. It, it still Prey is the best, like, the best streamed thing on Hulu right now. Yeah. So, in terms of, yeah, I think the I think the audience is ready for a no, new AVP. Too. So, yeah, 100%. keep the budget, like, say, $100 million. Yeah, don't you go can, overboard. You don't yeah, need to go need overboard. To. It's right, you're, it's, you're going to keep it R. It should be R. It's gonna be bloody, yeah. gory. You don't violence. need to spend that much money. And look at Godzilla minus one. I mean, that was made that at a shoestring budget. Out, yeah, that's turned out to be the biggest outlier ever in Hollywood. Oh, I history. know. But people now should look to that and say, "See what you can do with a I great storyline." Yeah. You know, and you don't have to have fantastic graphics because <laughs> minus one didn't have that great uh, of CG uh, CGI, but. The storyline was what drew people in, and it was it was authentic. It seemed real, and so I think with an AVP, if you lose the cheesiness, I think it would, uh, I think it would really, really do well. All right, we will go ahead and get into this next topic. Oh, by the way, I forgot to I forgot to mention uh, this for me on my rating system for Alien Romulus gets a nice medium popcorn. I am not the biggest horror fan, and like I said, I'm not the biggest Alien fan, but I appreciate, like, this is, of all the Alien films, this is the best one since the first one, in my opinion, uh, with the first ever Alien movie. Alien Romulus is now, the I would say, is the second best Alien movie behind the original Alien, which came out in the uh, late 1970s, if you can believe that that's how old this franchise is. So if you're a big uh, Alien fan, if you're a big Predator, if you're a big uh, fan of this franchise, you'll probably enjoy that large popcorn uh, at the theater. And with that, uh, this particular topic right here, we did a recording of this earlier, and the audio was turned off. So (laughs) that was my fault. This is actually our second recording uh, throughout this whole thing. And then come to find out after we're done recording, more news dropped with the Tennessee Titans. And apparently, Rand Carthon is just fry cooking everybody out of town with the previous draft picks that we've had. They're pretty much clean house. It's like Elijah Molding, Rashad Weaver get axed today on top of their 53-man roster. You, the Titan Savant fan... Just your reaction, like this is, I would say this is, this is Carthon madness in some eyes of how much he has done this one off season alone. Well, I think, I think, I don't know, obviously it wasn't there, but I think Amy Adams Strunk basically got tired of mediocrity and told Rand, you got, I think, I would say, and I would do the same if I were her, you got three years to build us a contending, a Super Bowl contending roster, do whatever you got to do. Make it happen. And I think that he's singing, singing, sending a signal to the locker room. If you're often hurt, you're not taking good care of your body or whatever the case may be, uh, or you're not playing up to your potential like we want you to, then you're gone. Or no more, I don't care where you were drafted, how much money you're making, what your name is, et cetera, et cetera, you're gone, right? We're moving into a new direction of uh, it, it, team first, uh, buy into the system and let's go win some games. And you can't do that. You're out at the door. And I, I, I applaud them for it because it's been, like we said, you said earlier. I've, I've never seen an off season this busy uh, in such a small amount of time, especially. So uh, I applaud it, and I, I look forward to hopefully it translating onto the field uh, to at least be a contender for AFC South. Exactly. And then in the next couple of years, possibly be a contender for the Super Bowl. Yeah. This is something to be like going into the off season, we was, we would expect some movement in the <laughs> in the free agency and the roster movement. Mm-hmm. This defense alone I forget offense. Just talk about the defense alone. Yeah. Jeffrey Simmons and Harold Landry and Roger McCreary. Those are your only key starters returning. Three players 
everybody else is a brand new starter in a different position. I mean, not I mean, not different. Like new players, you can look on this defense revamped from top to bottom. Besides those three players, now I do not count Arden Key because he is uh, like. I think he's overrated in my opinion, so he could just be a nobody. <laughs> I don't think he's starting. In my, I don't think he. I think I don't think he'll be starting. He may be starting week one, but he won't be starting um, sometime down the line. But those are your key three impact players because the rest are revamped from our secondary to our linebackers, who we just traded for for a bag of peanuts for their bag of peanuts to get mm-hmm. a free player this year. <laughs> if that's not highway robbery, I don't know what is. I honestly don't know what highway robbery is anymore. We steal uh, uh, Legereus Sneed from the Kansas City Chiefs for only a third-round pick, and he's an all-pro number one corner. For a third-round pick, we steal him away from the Chiefs. And then we get Cheeto Awuzie, which I was just watching a segment on the Cowboys, and it was going through a list of, like, it was, the topic was, is Jerry Jones, as he claims to be a great GM, they were showing him, like, they were showing on the graphic on first take, a list of good players drafted since uh, 2019. And on that list is Cheeto Awuzie. Cheeto Awuzie is on that list of best players drafted since 2017 or 2019. And, oh, by the way, yeah, he's on our roster now. So yeah. I would say we have now a revamped linebacking core. We have a defensive coordinator, which he has said from the get-go when he was hired that he is going to bring blitzes galore Pressure, almost to uh, what attacking you attacking off or defense attacking defense. I would say almost reminiscent to the glory days of the freak Keith Bullock and company uh, back with the Adelphia Coliseum, and what would you call it? Was it House, the of, House pain. of Pain? Exactly right there. Almost reminiscent to those days. Now I'll just do that for the secondary because now with Legarius Need and Roger McCreary, just on that side alone. Those are three. Those are two of the top five corners in the NFL to allow touchdowns last year. Why that is not being mentioned by the mainstream media in sports is criminal, in my opinion. Uh-huh. You like if this was if these corners were on the Cowboys, the Chargers, the Je- oh, yeah. or the Eagles, you'd be saying, "Oh, this is the new no fly zone." Oh, like yeah. this is. It's yeah, a, the Forty Nine ers had our secondary. Or the Dallas Cowboys, oh, or the it. Kansas City Chiefs, or the Buffalo Bills, or the New York Jets. Now, the Jets got a pretty good – they have a decent secondary. They have a good head coach to coach that defense, um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, Nashville, until you start winning, and, and it, it, it deservedly so, you should not be looked at in a favorable light until you start winning regularly, not just one year out of ten where you go, tw- you know, twelve and you know whatever, mm-hmm. and you go to a championship game or AFC championship. You, you should win regularly, win a Super Bowl. Then you have earned your spot in the pantheon discussion of teams that deserve respect. Now, Cowboys, in my mind, a team of the 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 the, the nineties and earlier since then. Nothing, and they're not America's team. You know, America's team right now would be what Kansas City, maybe the Steelers. I think they have more fans with the Steelers than they do with the Cowboys. Um, so you want to talk about America's team? That's the Patriots when they had Tom. Oh Brady. come on, Patriots! Patriotic. Please. You have the Patriots in your logo. Jeez, <laughs> but they deserve the conversation because they've won all those Super. Now yeah. it's different head coach, different system, different players, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's a different changing. discussion, yeah, exactly. but. Uh, you talk at least you have a little bit of history there with them with us there's history but there's no championships so you know we deserve the non-talk you know a small market we deserve until we start winning you know not to be talked about and that's fine that's fine i think you should earn your way exactly and so that's just the defense now you're talking about the offense now which Mm. you have a revanced wide receiving core and before our first recording today, we have five tight ends. We have now trickled that down to four. <laughs> four. So pretty soon, we're, we're probably going to buy... By the time this video is uploaded tomorrow, either Chico Quanquo is going to get <laughs> traded or someone else is going to get cut on this uh, on that depth Who chart. Who was it? Nick Vanette? Was he the one Vinette that was, was the go? one that got cut today, okay. uh, yeah. today as of this recording. Okay. Uh, so do you think uh, do you think Chick's going to be on that trading block? Would you, would you put him on? Would you entertain trading him? 
With Josh Wiley and that rookie tight end from Temple, you now have at your arsenal. <laughs> I wouldn't put anything past uh, Ran right yeah, now. Yeah, at this point, yeah. Why not? Uh, yeah. However, with four tight ends, I don't know that I would go any with this particular. I think with this scheme, you would need at least four tight ends, especially accounting. I, I don't know. I would keep four. It just seems like historically we've always kept four at least. I don't think we went lower than four before. We've always had three. The thing is that we, if we use a fourth tight end, I would imagine it'd be like more of a traditional fullback role. Yes. Like that fourth tight end would be like your traditional fullback. Mm-hmm. That Which you have Cincinnati never used. And go Rarely lines. used, I should say. They rarely use four tight ends, though, in, in uh, Cincinnati yeah, because, yeah. They, because they've had Jamar, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. Yeah. We're gonna have four tight ends with those three receivers. On the well, they field. used the tight end. I forget his name though. Uh, for Cincinnati, I can't. Ah, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, their tight his ends name. are no names. Yeah, but uh, no, no, this guy's. I can't think of it. Anyway, uh, as far as Chig, uh, no, I wouldn't. I, w- I don't know. It depends on what I can get from him. Uh, do I have any other needs somewhere else that I can get a, 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 a starter somewhere else? I don't know. Do I need another starter somewhere else? Well, you made the argument to me earlier uh, today that with now Elijah Molden traded, with all these late picks that we are accumulating apparently, mm-hmm. uh, that we're packaging them for someone else. Like The question is, what position would that be? So think? the only thing I can think of, uh, obviously aside from getting better, because what we're picking up are, are role players at depth. Depth pieces and special teams. Special players. teams, depth. But no, I don't think we've picked up any starters. No. Right? So... Uh, but we're picking up late round picks, sixth, seventh round. That's not a big thing, right? But if you're going to – I think this year for Will Levis is they're saying we're going putting all our chips in the center of the table. We're betting, we're betting on Will Levis. And so – and I think he knows that. Yeah. Um, and I think that barring injury, and I hate to say that because even injury now, they're, they've proven to say if you're an injured-prone player, we're getting rid of you because – the best ability is availability. is availability, right? So if Will is not the guy, which I hope he is, I think he can be, uh, if he's not the guy, then I think they're making moves now to set themselves up to package picks and maybe a player to be named later to move up in the draft to get who they want. for Because you have to have your franchise quarterback. You're not winning a Super Bowl without a franchise quarterback. There have been less than, I would say, a handful of teams who have won without a prototypical franchise quarterback. You had to go as far back as the Tampa Ra- Bay Bucks. The, the Bucks and with Johnson. With uh, the Ravens, with uh, Flacco? No, not Flacco. Uh, the one in 2000. Where oh, uh, uh, Dilfer. Yeah. Yeah, Trent Dilfer. Yeah, right. Yeah, you had to go back that But they far. had – those yeah. teams had elite defenses. defenses. You see what I'm saying? And I've always said, if you're going to have a good quarterback, you have to have elite line. You have to have an elite defense because your quarterback's not going to put them on, 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 the sh- on, your sh- on their shoulders mm-hmm. and carry the team like a, like a Tom Brady would or a Mahomes, someone like that, right? So, um, anyway, I think we're setting ourselves up now. If Will Levis proves to be the guy, maybe they're going to do something else to move up to get – because you look, our, our wide receiver core, though better and improved, is an aging wide receiver core. Yes. So maybe we're just positioning ourselves for this upcoming draft, not to pick sixth and seventh rounders, but to package and move up. Into the third round. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've proven we can pick them in the third. We can't pick them in the first and the second. We haven't had a third in years now. Jeez. So. We trade. Well, we trade this one for our bread Will. and butter. Has been the later rounds, apparently. Yeah, apparently. So. If you look at Rant's uh, record, uh, the last thing we will close out with this is that uh, this particular preseason, uh, I've loved what I've seen with the offense: mm-hmm. three touchdowns and one field goal, no punts for our starters, especially the third drive versus uh, the first drive versus the Saints. Calvin Ridley getting open. And even on the one where they had the uh, kick the field goal and Will Levis missed uh, Calvin Ridley for a touchdown. Yeah. That's something I feel like uh, uh, Callahan's going to correct on film with Will Levis and then yeah. come preseason he's going to nail those for touchdowns. Yeah, he didn't hit his check down on that. He, he was yeah. trying to make something special happen. But even on the play, but even on a couple of plays before that, 
if you heard the uh, broadcast, uh, Char- uh, Charlie Davis was saying he was about to go to his check down, and then he sees Calvin Ridley wide open for 30-plus yards down the field. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens there. But mm-hmm. my record, th- th- I mean, again, of all the things they've done this offseason, besides, I would say, on a like if I'm looking at skill sets for running backs, not scheme-related, mm-hmm. uh all of our positions we've upgraded at, except for running back because of Derrick Henry, because he's generational, talented running back. He's a bulldozer of a running back. The best, like one of the biggest running backs with speed since Earl Campbell back uh, back in the heyday. Uh, besides that particular position being technically downgraded, in my opinion, but the scheme that we're going to wor- run it works with what we got. But every single player on this roster, you cannot say that we've gotten worse compared to last year because Will Levis is better so far. Look what Malik Willis did. He was untradeable, and Brian Callahan has him for five months, and he and he makes him tradable. Yeah. So that right there should show you, yes, there was something wrong with Mike Vrabel's coaching staff. Oh, yeah. No one will trade for Malik, and 100%. then and then one preseason layer. Oh yeah, we'll give you a seventh rounder for Malik. Why not? Uh, we'll give you a seventh round. Yeah. By the way, take our kicker too, Green Bay. Take our yeah, take that Man. rookie kicker. I hope you enjoy him for twenty years for the mistake we probably messed up on that one. Because <sighs> we want Nick Folk for one more year. We want to try. Th- we want to try. Uh, yeah, we want to try that experiment of let's try one more year, and then we are in kicker hell of maybe that's what we're gonna do right we're gonna package picks and a player to be named later <sighs> oh to move up in the draft we not pull a buck in the second and, round to and, draft and a kicker a kicker in the third or fourth <laughs> round god no <laughs> no but i with with derrick henry we discussed this uh previously is that player for player yes is he a better running back than tajay and tony pollard yes but in this scheme i think in this exactly. offense i think Tony and or Tajay are better are better players in for the scheme. position yes. in this scheme because I think Derrick Henry made you more one dimensional though it was a good one dimension mm-hmm. uh, maybe the best but it does I think his presence on the field led to more uh, predictability whereas Tajay and and Tony Pollard do not lend itself to predictability it's going to be a run is it going to be a pass is it going to be a you know uh, some kind of jet sweep we don't know but with derrick henry on there two-thirds of your plays are going to be going to him probably uh so it's easy for the defense to say yeah uh we're going to just uh play for the run and put we're going to stack the box with eight nine players right yeah um so and with our receiver core being what it used to be there was nothing to defend really we mm-hmm. didn't we never had a true number one receiver uh outside of d hop last year um so yeah i i think that was it's it's better that we moved on and i said we should have traded tana hill and derrick henry before the 2023 season because we knew we were going to resign them and uh so i think that uh we could have gotten something out of the uh for them which we don't we didn't get anything no one's called ryan Tannehill. Uh, up to this moment, I don't think he. Yeah. I think he's done with football. I really do. He's gonna have another. He's gonna be the next Joe Flacco. No, Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl. No, I'm talking about like last year. He's on. the I couch know that, and then, but that's. I'm saying the reason why he came back was because Joe Flacco has a Super Bowl on his resume. Ryan Tannehill does not. What does he have on his resume? Joke. <laughs> Joke. That's Ryan Tannehill. He. The football guys, Choke. the football world could not handle Joe Flacco and the Browns going into Baltimore for an ASC championship <laughs> game. The, the football world and football gods would not allow that to happen. So they said, okay, Houston, enjoy your big playoff win with CJ Stroud. And Joe Flacco becomes Joe Flacco right now yeah. and throws interception after interception. Well, the, the Ryan world, the world not could not a job. handle that. I don't, know yes. why you, I don't know why you think he's getting a job. I'm saying he could get back. It is never. I don't know when it's inevitable that he gets on a roster this year because no. someone's going to get hurt. So you're, you're going to go with the, then, the, the, the Avengers quote of it's inevitable. I am inevitable. <laughs> really? Ryan Tannehill is now, what's the guy who had Thanos. this? Thanos. Ryan Tannehill is Thanos. Okay. <laughs> He's inevitable. 
<laughs> I mean, if Tua goes down, who are the Dolphins going to go? They just released Mike White for their backup. I don't they know. They have uh, Ryan Tannehill. They're not going to go to nobody. Ryan Tannehill. They nobody's. They're the not going to go to Ryan Tannehill. Sam Darnold injury out for the season away. Bailey, Bailey Zappi. Bailey Zappi. He's still in New England right now unless he got cut. No, he down. got cut. You really think Bailey? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I read Bailey Zappi's going to get that. Bailey Zappi got cut. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think I read that he got cut. Bailey Zappi is not getting a job before Ryan Tannehill. That's why not? I mean, he's a better passer. I mean, hey, I mean that's going to be a bigger indictment against Tannehill if yes, if they get he deserves it. Move on. I agree with you. Tannehill sucks. I agree with you, but he's a backup quarterback better than some of these other backup quarterbacks right now. Tannehill's I, if I'm the, the Colts, I would have much rather have had Ryan Tannehill as my backup than sign Joe Flacco as my backup in Indianapolis right now. That's I, just me. That's uh, just me. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, before we get into another is Mason Rudolph the best backup quarterback conversation, we are going to quickly close out the show. Uh, we were talking about how Disney's handling one studio better compared to the other the other being lucasfilm and star wars and it is official and if you watch this podcast we pretty much confirmed it before the other traits did and that the acolyte is officially dead who per uh yeah acolyte it's a, it's a show what is that it's a show what show it's a star wars show on disney plus oh really they made a show called acolyte apparently didn't know yeah <laughs> it must have been really good was it good no, it was, it, was, it was dog crap. <laughs> it was dog crap. So it has led to, yeah, before you interrupted me with that little <laughs> joke, because because John Campia's compadre, uh, Robert, Robert Meyer Burnett, made the same joke with uh, Madden Webb whenever a topic of Madden Webb would pop up. He was like, they're making a Madden Webb movie? Madden Webb. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, really? Oh. <laughs> Anyways. It has led to discussions and talks of now that, again, if you watch this channel, you have known this 10 days before the traits broke it that the Acolyte is officially canceled. Done. Throw it in the trash can. It's not going forward. The High Republic will only now exist with just that one season of Acolyte. And so now it has led to discussions of what should Star Wars do next? Up on the docket is the following. They have Skeleton Crew, a Disney Plus Star Wars show coming out in December of this year. They have planned Andor Season 2, Ahsoka Season 2, and their first film since 2019 in the Star Wars universe called The Mandalorian and Grogu. If you don't know who Grogu is, he is Baby Yoda. That is his name that we learn in Season 2 of The Mandalorian. I am Grogu. So, (laughs) yeah, there's a crossover right there. So, in terms of you being the average... I am average. You're not the hardcore Star Wars fan. No, I'm not. But you you have some knowledge of Star Wars is that... What do you want this franchise to do next? You want them to take a break? What do you want them to do in terms of going forward with content stories? Is this is Star Wars becoming diluted in your eyes? As the average Star Wars fan, I think I speak for most um, when I say that there is way it's saturated with Star Wars films, series, animated, whatever it is. Uh, there seems to be so much out there, and not all of it is good. A lot of it is actually really bad. Uh, so the average fan is like, "What? Where are we going? Are we going backwards, forwards? Are we, cause are we all, in between something?" The average yeah. fan knows episodes one through six. Really, it's about one, two, four, five, six. Yeah. Now so, there's now there's nine, but yeah. Now there's nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they don't know the. The previous stuff and the, the, the moving, uh, you know, a couple millennia in the future or anything. So I think they're like, where where are we in this now? Personally, I would say let's pause and figure this thing out. You know, uh, why is it suffering? Is it the writers? Is it the acting? Is it is it is it storyline? What is it? I would prefer if you're going to do it though, to go personally because of the video game the the old republic i i think that storyline to me is more uh uh intriguing if you will 
Uh, and I know you also mentioned maybe go a couple millennia, you know, a couple, you know, two or three thousand years in the future. After the rise of Skywalker, yeah. right? Yeah. What ha- and like what happens? What to happens? This, where do we? Where did this they, where Jedi did they go? order that Ray right. has reestablished? But again. I think really, if, if Kathleen Kennedy is going to remain at the helm, that she needs to become, you know, humble and and listen to uh, the those that say you're going in the wrong direction. Uh, and why, and what they think you need to go, where, what direction you need to go, because the ultimately it is a business, as we heard in our podcast, and if people don't buy your product, right, no matter how much you believe in it, then you know, you're not making money, so therefore we gotta move on. We have to make money. That's the whole point. Now, yeah. if she thinks that this is my product, so proud of it, I can't do any better, I believe in it 100% and I'm not going to change, then she needs to step aside. Bob Iger needs to make that happen. But if she's if she's willing to change, then okay, I, I'd be willing to entertain that. But I think they need to pause on Star Wars, figure out what's going wrong, and then move in a new direction after that. Um, but if she is not willing to change, I mean, the people have spoken. On, on, through on, the viewership numbers, through the even box. even Indiana Jones five, oh, yeah, the, the latest Lucasfilm film, mm-hmm. which flopped tremendously, yes, horribly at the box office. Mm-hmm. And 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 if that your was supposed to be your your magnus opus, then you sorely missed the boat. Um, so that to me says. Maybe you're not the right person for the job. At least not right now. Maybe for some other company, maybe. But right now, I don't think I don't think it's happening with her. Yeah. So Kathleen Kennedy, just like any bad GM or any bad head coach, they need to be fired or be t- or be told like uh, Mike like Mike Malarkey. We have parted ways is the term they would use. We have decided to part ways with each other. <sighs> Kathleen Kennedy needs to. She needs to be. She needs to step aside because, I mean, we have seen so many things be announced and not happen. Mm. We have seen so many directors and writers be announced, and they leave because oh, we've parted ways or we have creative differences. We have Benioff and Weiss of Game of Thrones that were set to do now uh, put out there old Republic films that mm. would have been. Two of them would have been out by now. The second one, just this past December, was a supposed release date a year after uh, Avatar The Way of Water. They were supposed to do December one year Star Wars, December the next year Avatar. They were doing back and forth, back and forth. That was the strategy they had originally. There has been no film for Star Wars since 2019 with the rights to Skywalker. And that film divided a lot of fans of The Last Jedi did not. Mm. Because uh, what did they do with... Uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm just asking rhetorically. He's like, oh yeah, what did they do with uh, Ray? This supposed nobody. Oh yeah, you made her a Palpatine. Which, by the way, we won't ask how in the world did Palpatine stoop a woman, and what? And I don't want to be reading that book anytime soon. Of like, where did he have time on his side to have uh ch- to have a child who then birthed his grandchild down down the line, which they retconned into Episode Nine. Mm-hmm. But that's neither here nor there. She needs to step aside. The the reason they that Disney has done such a great job being like being hands off with Marvel, putting the right people at 20th Century Studios once they acquired the studio, and then they took a hands off approach because it's like, hey, you're the guys, you're like pretty much a brand new studio, you're just like you're essentially like Marvel and Lucasfilm. Go run 20th Century Studios the way you know how to run 20th Century Studios. The results for them have been great film after great film after, like, solidly great film. Is it box office banger for 20th Century Studios? Not necessarily, but the but the quality is there for yeah. the consumer. And, I mean, for better or for worse, they're putting, like, they're putting out, like, not a lot because they're now owned by Disney, and, for, yeah. and rightfully so. Like, it's because, this, like, studios will put out, like, tens and tens of films every year to where 20th Century Studios has now been relegated to like Marvel status of like they'll have two, three, four films a year. Mm-hmm. And that works for them and we see it now work that it does work for them. For Star Wars, for Lucasfilm, why they have not parted ways with Kathleen Kenny is still 
beyond is still beyond me. Either she has photos of <laughs> Bob Iger in the board, yeah. or they are just so inclined to give her her swan song that she thought was going to be Indiana Jones 5, which I'm now convinced after the acolyte getting canceled is that she wants to go out on a win. And the surefire thing, I guess, for her on film, I mean, to put out on film, is your most successful thing on Disney Plus, The Mandalorian. Uh, make that into a movie. Give that like give that a movie treatment. Here's the prob- Here's the problem, though. And we did not discuss this the first time around. I will discuss it now with you. One of the reasons the Marvels bombed at the box office and wasn't received well is because they felt lost with two of the three main characters. Two of them came from two separate Disney Plus shows. And if you watch the movie, you're like, who are these people? Did I miss something? Yeah, they were introduced and shows instead of introduced in prior movies for the for the Mandalorian and Grogu movie, I do I think if they're gonna run to that same problem as to do I need to watch all the other Mandalorian shows to understand what's going on right now, or is this gonna be a fresh story? Do I need to watch what's happening or coming up in Ahsoka, which is supposedly everything John Favreau and Dave Filoni that they touch, including Skeleton Crew is leading up to like their end game per se with Star Wars with the Grand Admiral Thrawn heir to the Empire storyline which is a good storyline to do but you don't do it in just TV shows and then say bam there's the movie go mm. and see the movie and see the payoff for those that don't have Disney Plus they're like it's like it's like watching end, end games your first movie yeah. that you're watching like no. what happened with all these characters what like did I miss something uh, yeah, you missed the last 10 years of buildup on film. Yeah. So I don't know how you would do a Mandalorian Grogu in a single movie. I mean, I mean, you could, obviously, but there's what they, a lot what they, of what history What they better there. not do, what they better not do is use this movie as a promo for season four. They better not so use this. Saying, start they better off not, with a brand new, with a new movie, which branches off into a season four, four of the Mandalorian. This better that don't not, make any sense. This, <laughs> it, it, that's the one thing that better not be is a promo for, <gasps> you want to see the rest of the story of Mandalorian Grogu? Sign up on Disney plus for yeah. season four in terms of what they need to do. They need to either pick, they need to pick an era. They need to pick a thousand. They need to pick either, the old Republic era, which is thousands and thousands of years before Phantom Mess. Yeah. Or they need to go far into the future after Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Because pick one era, then have a storyline that you do with your writer's room. Set around like your overall arc of what you want to do and what is your end game of that particular arc. And have your movies based on that and then have spinoff TV shows around that same era. And then when you reach the end of that roadmap, do you leave threats open for like a continuation of that? Like, do you do your end game between Revan and Malak and then your threat line after that is you leave the door open to a Darth Bane? I mean, I mean, to a Darth Malgus, possibly. Do you possibly crawl into the rule of two introduction with Sith Lore with Old Republic and that be your end game for the Old Republic Star Wars storyline that you may have or do you go after you're done with Old Republic do you then go into thousands and thousands of years into the future after Rise of Skywalker or vice versa like that's that's what they need to do will it be done I don't know because it is also, there a it demand also, for it though for Old Republic it there has to be I Old Republic I can see because like I said I think there that's has intriguing. to be Yes. But, I mean, you have to have a demand out there of some sort, unless you're going to create demand, which I don't think they're creating demand with Star Wars because there's so much of it out there. So Keanu Reeves was supposed to be in the Acolyte uh, playing uh, Jedi Master Soul. He turned it down, and the podcast we were listening to with Christian Harloff mm-hmm. uh, saying, oh, he, he didn't do it because of schedule conflicts, which I agree with. Uh, I forget his name. That was on Christian's show. That he said, yeah, that's just Hollywood talk of. He probably saw the script and said, uh, nah. no, th- no, thank you. <laughs> Send me something better, please. Yeah. So, yeah. like, some fans have speculated that he could, like, he could be, could he be a Darth Revan, where he's a Sith, 
brainwashed by the Jedi, turn good. He realizes he's been brainwashed, but he still is. He continues that good Jedi redemption arc. Could I can't. Do I can't. Yeah, him? I think that would. I, that's 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 interesting because I can't remember Keanu Reeves playing a a a, a, a bad character, an, an antagonist. Unless he was one in the uh, Matrix that I'm not aware of. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's what I'm saying. That someone. It's kind of like. It's kind of like Robert Downey Jr. being Doctor Doom. Uh, Doctor Doom. You know, it's like, oh, I've never seen him in a in an antagonist position before. Yeah. You know, in his adult film. I mean, in his previous careers. He was technically uh, the antagonist in Civil War. If you want to, yeah, I got you wanna it. But route. still, Captain he, America's movie. He was still the hero. A hero, so to speak. But yeah, I think that would be interesting. I don't know that it would translate to monies at the the box office, but who knows? It'll make more money than Mandalorian Grogu. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> or more so than their supposed Ray solo movie that they're supposedly doing. Oh God, no. So, Please no. Or more money than the supposed James Mangold Jedi origin story of how the force came to be and how the first Jedi Order came to be. Again, there are better ideas than what the supposed... The supposed three films we're supposed to get is Mandalorian Grogu, the Rey Solo movie, and a Jedi Force origin story with James Mangold. Supposedly. Yeah. Again, we were supposed to get a Rogue One... Like, we are supposed to get a Rogue Squadron movie. Like, think Top Gun Maverick, but for Rebel pilots in the Star Wars in the Star Wars universe. That was announced the same day that the Acolyte and Shogun was announced and that Patty Jenkins was going to be directing and writing it. And they announced it. They don't do a, oh, here's a formal announcement of Rogue Squadron. No, here's the director on stage. She's on, like, she's on, she's outside saying, hey everybody, I'm so excited to do Rogue Squadron. My dad was an Air Force pilot and I want to do, and I'm doing this movie in honor of his memory of being in the Air Force and serving our U.S. military. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to get my own, uh, and I'm going to get my own TIE fighter or whatever ship it is that the Rebellion uses. It is on an aircraft carrier with an actual Rebel plane on it. Hmm. An actual aircraft carrier. Hmm. That's how they announce it of like, hmm. Okay, yeah, and now after we see, and this was before Top Gun Maverick, but now they're saying that it was, it's in the vein of Top Gun, Top Gun Maverick. It's like, uh, yeah, hmm. yeah, where do I sign up for that kind of movie? Like, yeah. Rogue One was good. We love Top Gun. We love the idea that they announced through their words, not mine, not someone else's, their own words from the horse's mouth that the Acolyte was supposedly a Sith dark side based show we have not seen that before it was said to be in a new era it's not old republic it's not uh the republic area uh era of the skywalkers it was supposed to be somewhere in between called the high republic where that takes place could they delve into the master of uh darth sidious could they delve into darth bane could they delve into the era before the rule of two possibly this is also was supposedly the era of where sith were extinct supposedly there were many ways you could have tackled the show from the viewpoint of the sith of trying to keep your uh, like keep your presence a secret where you have vast amounts of sith around you but the whole general public the republic the senate the jedi have no idea that you exist at all no they turn into a murder mystery and even if you did do a good murder mystery like you just lied to me of what the show was going to be about now you add on top of that, it was a horribly directed and written murder mystery. Oh, so and so could, is the only one who could possibly be the Sith Lord. <gasps> Ooh, how surprising was that? Not that was not surprising at all. The one-liners in this show will live in memory online. The power of one, the power of two, the power of many is one line the other line is one of the first lines you hear in the show attack me no 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 i can't say i can't i have to act it out attack me with all your strength all right you're creeping oh. me out <laughs> God, this, let this, the acolyte this, this go this was Josh. a show let it this, go let this, it go yes let it go. i have ranted on the show enough yes. i've ranted on the show enough <laughs> it's a failure it's been confirmed to be a failure and i'm just all right, we will end that 
there tonight, folks. And before we sign off, be sure you like and comment and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And am I crazy about the Acolyte uh, finally being dead? Am I crazy or for suggesting, are we crazy that for suggesting that Star Wars should be taking a break? Should they go into the Old Republic? Should they go thousands of years past the Rise of Skywalker? What do you think of the Titans 2024 season? Do you think we're going to win 12 wins? Or do you think, what, like he thinks, our floor could be 7 wins this year? Uh, what do you think about Alien Romulus? Do you think there should be an Alien vs. Predator uh, re like revisit on film? With that, this is my father, Jack Mickle. I'm your host, Joshua Mickle. And as always, keep kicking it to the king.